Hello everyone, welcome to the Blue Fox Bar. This is Mike Lindsley, partner at Blue Fox Group, hosting a tech talk, all things technology, business, strategy, what we see out there in the public. Today I have with me Ron Llewellyn, our Senior Technical Alignment Manager at Blue Fox, who works specifically with our customers. Um, Ron, why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself and tell them, tell them what you do specifically for our clients. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so the big thing that I really kind of contribute here as a Technical Alignment Manager is I take um, larger concepts from the uh, Virtual Chief Information Officer or the CIO um, of the company and bring those into reality. You know, um, what does it mean to actually uh, you know, construct this particular project and so forth? What does it mean to the end user as it gets there? Um, so kind of taking those steps, everything from documentation down to you know, standard operating procedures, scope of works, things of that nature, um, just so that everyone's on the same page and uh, we can technically get everything done the way we need to. So more so taking the technical piece out of it, and helping translate that into a business message yeah. so a customer can make a decision that aligns with their goals. Absolutely, yeah, cool. because, they, because they, yeah, they're, they're worried about making those business decisions and I'm gonna be the intermediary between them and the actual techs that will be doing the work and achieving that. Very cool. What I wanted to talk about today is stuff that we often talk about, whether it's in the bar after work, collaborating with all of our team or at the water cooler, yeah. lunchroom, <laughs> maybe after a good 80s song that yeah. comes up in the, in the, in the tech area. But we always talk about some of the biggest changes that are going to impact our clients in the next year. Being the start of, of, of 2023, or what do you see that's going to impact our clients the most this next year that they have to be on the lookout for? Uh, I think one of the biggest things that they're going to be looking out for, you know, we have been pushing a lot with uh, hardware and so forth, but now it's really going to be that cybersecurity insurance. It's yeah. really going to be security heavy. Um, obviously, we want to prevent a problem from happening in the first place, but um, but if it does, you want to have that insurance correctly. The insurance has been around for quite a while, but the the companies have been had a lot of claims over these last two years, and uh, they have been changing the moving the goalposts almost quarterly <laughs> in terms of what they're trying to achieve. So things that used to be um, we wish we would have now are mandatory. Uh, an example would be uh, uh, business continuity plans or disaster recovery plans. Yep. Those types of things used to be um, only for enterprise, only for very large businesses. Nowadays, no, no, they're they're required for for you know all sizes of businesses. Uh, the good news is, is they're not very difficult to do, but um, they're very important to have. Uh, you know, that's one of the. So you're seeing, you're really seeing that the clients actually have to take this seriously. Yes. Now. Yes. Right. It's, it's, it's not passing the buck. You know, there's yeah. a lot of stuff. A business continuity plan, in particular, has got a lot of engagement with the with the clients. You know, we at Blue Fox are here to help basically interpret that in a way that makes sense for them. Yeah. You know, make it more simplified, right? Yeah. There's a lot of. If you just go to look into it, you Google it, you're going to see a lot of information related to it. So putting it in there in perspective for them and what makes sense to them, it doesn't have to be 80 pages. We have a couple of larger clients that it's three. Yeah. Um, it, but the idea is you have a plan and understand. And understand what you're doing. I mean, oftentimes I go in there and I ask the question and it's okay, but I ask, hey, can you honestly fill out your cyber insurance form? The answer 99% of the time is no, mm -hmm. right? So that's a good indication of, hey, okay, we gotta start you know, understanding where we're at as a business. What can we do to make sure if something does happen that we actually qualify Correct. and can be protected? Um, we look at it for us that if you're not taking those things seriously, you're spending all this money on cyber liability insurance, which is only going up because mm -hmm. the amount of claims and attacks that we're seeing all the time. And if you, for some reason, filled out the form inaccurately, whether you knew to do it wrong, exactly. right, yeah. <laughs> the right way, yeah. or you just knew that, Did hey, uh, yeah, I'm going to check that mm -hmm. box, people are now getting denied on those claims, right? So not only are they losing money from a, a, a risk or a hack, but they're also, you know, spent all this money on insurance that, that is never going to pay off for them. So it's almost like a double whammy on there. It, it, it absolutely is. And there's a lot of business, you know, a lot of business owners, they're not liars. They're not trying to cheat the system. It, a, a common question will be is, do you have multi-factored authentication? Yeah. MFA, it's on there. And they'll be like, well, yes, I log into my email and I have MFA. But what they don't see in the new nuances in there is that there's other portions of their business that also may require that. And those might be the areas that get hit. And that is the loophole that the insurance companies are looking for and says, well, the attack didn't originate via your email. It originated during yeah. this portion of your business. 
you did not have MFA like you said you did. So it's like surface level at that standpoint. Exactly. Hey, yeah, I think my guy said yeah, we had that, of right? Of course I have MFA. Without a true, you know, analysis of going through that, something that your role does from a technical Correct. alignment that says, okay, hey, look, let's go through this. <laughs> let's check these boxes. Let's yeah. make sure you know where you stand. And maybe the spots that, you know, you're uncertain of, are you willing to take that risk of that liability or is it worth it to fix it? Absolutely. Right? A that's, lot of it's just a business decision based on time and money and risk. Absolutely. Yeah. And that's that's a good segue into one of the other, you know, main parts that I have is I, I write reports. So yeah. We call them alignment reports effectively, but um, they're uh, they're very factual. They're yes or no answers. Yeah. Do you have this? Yes or no. Um, and uh, the example on MFA, I'll have a question. Do you have multi-factor authentication? And I have to say yes only if every aspect has it. Yeah. And if I say no, I have to explain why no, and that would be an instance. And that would be something to help someone understand. Huge, yeah. huge. They come back and they say, well, wait a minute, I thought that. And that's, yeah. where the, that's where we have these reviews with our customers and explain that in detail. Yeah. And help bring them into alignment effectively. Yeah. That's kind of the whole point. Well, I'm gonna keep this short today, Ron. Thank you for sitting here with us. Uh, we often, like I said, chat about this, so we figured let's put it, let's put, I'm gonna use the old school term, let's put it on film, right? It dates me from, from football days, but I think I think the key takeaway here is today is to start to understand your cyber liability insurance, right? Can you answer that form accurately? If you can, you know, can you reach out to someone that can help you? Don't hesitate to call us and ask. We're, we're happy to do a, a free cyber insurance review. Um, and once again, thanks for watching. Appreciate it.